So I recently purchased new batteries. I bought two brand new 31M deep cycle batteries and I bought one brand new starting battery. Uh, so what I've done here is I'm going to move the batteries around a little bit. I'm locating all the batteries to the back of the boat. Uh, so that brings up an unusual circumstance. So what I have is I've got 30 feet from the back of the boat to the trolling motor now. So if I'm going to run a distance that far, I can't do it with standard conventional wire because I'd have to go all the way up to about a size 2. Size 2 wire is pretty expensive, especially if you start buying it in the tinned version. And that's the type that has the coating on it. It's almost like, a, almost like the uh, resin you use to solder stuff together, or to solder, I should say. Well, so what I usually use is I use welding wire. Now, you can get welding cable, and it's got a real thick outer skin on it. It's very abrasive resistant. Uh, it's very flexible. You can fold it up and tie it in a bow just about. So that's what I use. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your cables. Because the first thing I've got to do is figure out the location of my batteries. And I've done that. I've located them in the back. My trolling motor is all the way up in front. So i got to make cables up that are about 26 foot long, 27 foot long. Now if you go try to buy a cable that size, it's going to be pretty expensive. So I'm going to show you how to make your own. So you see this is number two wire, multi-strand, really pliable. So what you got to do first, I'm using basic tools here. You want to see how far back you want to cut the insulation. And what I usually do is I go about a light quarter more than I actually need. And I'll show you why in just a second. I'm using a not so sharp knife because I don't want to cut any of the interior copper bands in it. There we go. So we got that cut. And you want it to where you can literally get every strand inside there. The more strands you get in there, the better. All right, there you go. And you can see I've got a heavy quarter more than what I actually needed to go inside there. Normally I'd be a little bit closer, but this will be fine. Now, I'll clamp it anyway even though I'm going to do this soldering on it. And all I'm doing is just making it where it's nice and tight. So now we got it good and tight. It's deformed to where it'd be hard for it to pull out. Even now it'd be hard for it to pull out. But what can happen is water can get down inside this connection and it can cause a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of corrosion around it. And where you're going to lose the voltage is inside here. You're not going to lose it through the course of this wire. But if this thing gets corroded, all of a sudden you'll start getting spotty, uh, you know, you'll get spotty signals on your on your uh, trolling motor. You'll, you'll lose the GPS signal. It's because it's wiggling around inside there. So what I do is pretty simple. I'll take one of these little torches. You can use a, a big torch, but I like this little torch because you can really zoom in on what you're trying to do. It takes a little longer to get it hot this way. I'm using a standard electrical sorter. This ain't plumbing sorter, this electrical sorter. It's already got flux inside of it. And that flux helps it bond. And it also helps the uh, sorter run. Now the reason why I left that quarter inch gap, you can see now, the reason why I left that quarter inch gap is that way I'm not heating the rubber on this. Heat it up. You don't want to put the sorter in the torch because it'll melt the sorter. You want to heat that fitting up and heat up that copper wire on the inside. Touch the copper above. You see I left a little ball there. When you see that ball start to run, then you know you're right. All right, we're about there. Now look, I'm touching the copper wire, but if you'll notice the solder is trying to run down in that. All right, we're good and hot now. I'll just put the solder on it. And right now that solder is actually running down inside that fitting. So what's happening, I'm getting a complete bond to it now. All right, I'll take it off. Now what that's done, see so now that wire's got that silver sheen to it, that solder has run all the way to the bottom down there. And you can see this thing's still plenty hot enough to melt solder. 
but you want that sorter to run down inside that coupling so now that thing's totally sealed up on the inside there water can't get in there as long as water can't get in there you ain't gonna have an issue now i will still put my shrink wrap over the top of it once it cools i'll put my shrink wrap over it. i'll shrink wrap that connection sometimes i'll even put two layers of shrink wrap over it. and sometimes i'll go ahead and put a couple bands of uh, black tape electrical tape around it but that's how i make my connections and this is what your completed connection looks like that's two layers of heat shrink with a layer of a good quality vinyl electrical tape over the top of it that connection there lasts a long time and like i say this wire being a two is capable of pulling about a hundred amps continuous so it should be no issue as always thank you for taking the time to watch these videos i hope you got something out of it if you got anything out of it, feel free to leave questions or comments. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. I appreciate you watching. I really do. Thank you.